fairly simple. Find the same spot that you probably would have uh, stuck a needle into. So kind of into your axillary line, fourth or fifth uh, inner space, <clears throat> somewhere around here, kind of slide over, and it'll be somewhere right in there. Now the problem with this is there's not really that big a problem with it, but if you get down to right about probably here, uh, which is not that hard to kind of get into, uh, what's on the inside, what, when you poke your finger in there, what you feel is liver and not um, lung, but liver feels a lot like lung. Uh, so what you, end up, what you can end up doing is getting into the, if the diaphragm goes up to here, you do your successful like decompression, or you do your successful cut, and then you like dissect down, and then you get in, you put your finger in there, and you feel this thing you think is a lung, when actually it's a bit of liver, and you just haven't actually like cleared the chest. Now, if you were in the belly, the guy's in cardiac arrest, so like, is it that big a deal? Well, you kind of like stuck your finger inside the uh, <coughs> inside his belly. Um, but but the biggest thing is that it, it hasn't it hasn't been successful in decompressing the guy's chest. So uh, kind of look line over and feel for the inner space. <clears throat> what you're going to do is, keep in mind the ribs are going to go like that. Um, you're going to make a cut over top, uh, usually you go over top of a rib itself, like not, not like in the space above, but literally on top of the rib. Make a cut along there, uh, and then you're going to take the clamps, or preferably like a curb kelly, stick it into that hole through the skin, dissect through there, and get over top of the rib, and then you kind of dissect down, you feel this tough uh, like gristle layer basically, which is the pleura. Uh, once you feel that, uh, this is where I said before, like, okay, uh, sir, this is really going to hurt, because if the guy's awake, this is really painful at this point. Um, this part is actually not too bad, you can usually numb this up. But what you physically do is shove the end of the clamp through that thing. Like, you're, you're literally just tearing a hole in the side of his chest. Then when you got it in there, you usually open the clamps up and pull them back a little bit to expand that hole. <clears throat> Um, then you would take, you would come out with your clamps, take your finger and go in and the idea is to feel inside the chest cavity and sweep entirely around to make sure there's no adhesions, but you should feel, pleur, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, parietal pleur on this side, visceral pleur on the back of your finger, which is the, the lung tissue itself. And once you've done that, you've ensured that you've let any air out of the chest wall, or any, out of, any air out of the pleural space. Um, <clears throat> and that he's been successfully decompressed. And again, at that point, like, he's going to have an open pneumothorax. It's literally just a hole in his chest. But <clears throat> if you've got positive pressure that you're breathing for him, you can then inflate that lung so you can get some gas exchange. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the yeah. way to do it. So all you really need for this is, you know, they have these giant kits. You don't really need much. Um, Preferably you'd have a, we don't have a curve set, preferably you'd have a curve set just because it makes it easier, and a scalpel. At this point, Jason is going down his rectal bleed, he's getting all concerned about the shock and stuff, so. Is that bad? Yeah. Oh, I just put in a total, you know, calls if you were just, gotcha. Gotcha. Do what happens to me. Do I want to go at it? We, we can basically do two on each side. Uh, two I definitely do that. I want one. Yeah. Go for it. So, and just to make sure that we're kind of right. Yeah. Kind of so kind of right, right. Like there is. It does have so a little bit of a divot. That. Okay. So incision. Uh, incision, but I would go if that's if that's what you think is your fourth rib, and you're intending to go in that space. I go over top, make your cut over top of the fifth rib, like along the axis of the fifth rib. Okay. Yep. And then, yep. And uh, you're gonna want a big cut here. Again, this guy's in cardiac arrest, and when we're doing it, um, <clears throat> and everybody kind of tends to err on the small side and make like these little centimeters like that. If you want a big cut, you know, if it goes from here to here, if it goes from anterior axillary line to mid-axillary line, yeah, like what he's got, pretty so, good. So, don't be afraid to really don't, slice. Don't, right? be, just, don't be afraid to make a big hole. Just crack his chest. Uh, and that's that's probably, if you made one like that mm -hmm. size, that's probably not too bad for what we're doing. Okay. It's just a skin and signal. You can always sew this back up with a, All right. uh, <clears throat> uh, a little bit of suture afterwards if you didn't need it. Uh, well, to go, I would go in first. You're going to have to dissect through a little bit of tissue. Uh, so take them 